how many games will the New England Patriots win in 2024? What's going on, Pats Nation? It's Mitch here, here with my record prediction for your, for my New England Patriots. Last year, it was a disaster. We ended up with a top three pick. Will this year be any better? Is this the start of a new era? Gerard Mayo, Drake May, will they have success right away? Or will this just merely be a building block for the future? Grok, spike the like button. Don't forget to let me know in the comments your opinion on the Pats. How many games do you see New England winning in 2024? And don't forget to subscribe for every record prediction in the NFL, all 32 teams, a video just like this, where I go game by game, schedule by schedule, and give you my record prediction for each team here in May. Okay, let's go. Let's flip over to the schedule, and let's discuss the New England Patriots 2024 schedule. They kick it off with Joe Burrow, Joe Shiesty, Joe Vader. I don't know what they're calling him nowadays. He's got the Anakin Skywalker haircut. And he is going to be hosting the New England Patriots. I fear for the Patriots in this game. I don't like this for us. I will say that the Cincinnati Bengals are not very good typically early in the season. So it, maybe we can get a sneaky victory here. We also have quite a few members of the Browns coaching staff, a team that typically beats the Bengals, if that matters at all. There is carryover potentially here for at least understanding how to attack the Bengals' defense, especially from Van Pelt's point of view. Jacoby Brissett, I think, will be the starter for the Patriots, although I'm not 100% sure. It could be Drake May. Just a little, like, voice thing that they did, the capture of Drake May at whatever it was, OTAs, rookie camp, I don't know. He already seems like he's in control. He's confident, and he's going to be a leader on this team, which is the biggest thing you need if you're going to start as a quarterback, right? You need that leadership skill set, and Drake May certainly already has that. Now, whether they feel like the team is ready for him, he's ready for the team, he gives them the best chance from week one, that's a different story. We'll have to see the preseason. I don't really know. But regardless, I'm going to pick the Bengals here. I just feel like with all the new in New England, especially being this game is on the road, especially with the offense, you know, coordinating a new run game, coordinating a new play action, coordinating new protections, having a new offensive coordinator, having a new quarterback, having new receivers. It's going to be tough to play a team as chemistry built as the Bengals. I mean, you look at their roster and they really have lost few pieces since the season they made the Super Bowl. And their defense is pretty much the same. Their offense is pretty much the same. And they've got one of the best quarterbacks in the league, one of the best receiving cores in the league, an improved offensive line, a really solid defense with a good coordinator, that's one of the top teams in the NFL, one of the top teams in the AFC. No shame in losing this game. I do think the Patriots' defense can give Joe Burrow some issues early in the season. They do match up decent if they can get after him a little bit, and Gonzalez can limit Chase. I feel like the Pats could make this pretty close. I just don't know if the Pats' offense will be up to the task of keeping up with Burrow and company. So I'm going to go with the Bengals there. In week two, the Patriots play the Seattle Seahawks at home. In my opinion, judging off this schedule in the first month, I think this is the game that the Patriots have to win to not start 0-4. Because you look at the schedule in September, and they play Seattle at home. They play every other game on the road, which is criminal. And maybe a reason why you don't start Drake May. Because you have four games, or three games in the first month, that are on the road. So you eliminate three of the eight games that will be on the road for this season. But after the Bengals game, they play Seattle at home. Then they play the Jets on a Thursday night on the road. Then they play the Niners in San Fran, which is all almost certainly a loss. So they kind of have to win this game. And that's why I think they will win this game. Just like the Patriots, Seattle is 
very new in terms of the coaching on both sides of the ball, though. Mike McDonald, new head coach, new defensive scheme, some new playmakers for them with Byron Murphy from Texas. And then offensively, a whole new scheme coming from Washington, the college game. How will Geno respond to that? I do think the Patriots, especially in their building in New England, home opener, the excitement of the fans in this new era, I think that will uplift the Patriots to a win. I think the defense shines in this game. I think their pass rush really provides some issues for Geno Smith. And I don't think Kenneth Walker has anywhere to go in the run game. I think the Patriots squeeze this one out in a tight, close ball game. Week three, I think they lose to the Jets in New York. It's a short week, a Thursday night. I don't think Drake May still won't be playing by this point. I think this will be the Jets kind of starting to settle into their identity. What are they going to be with Aaron Rodgers, this defense? And look, the Jets are one of the most talented teams in football. They have one of the few defenses that's just as good as New England, if not better. And they certainly have a more talented offense with a signal caller that's a lot more experienced. A guy that is still very accurate, maybe even if he lacks mobility and lacks that ability to extend, I still think he's going to be able to call the checks and balances at the line of scrimmage, get them in the right play, not be confused by the Patriots' defense. New England's going to have to hold them in here defensively because the Jets, they're hard to score on. They're hard to move the ball against. This is going to have to be a defensive game, as almost all these games have been. Can Gonzo go toe-to-toe with Garrett Wilson once again? Right, They've got Mike Williams now. We've got to contend with that. Brees Hall in the running game, who actually had a great game against New England late last season. This is not Zach Wilson anymore. This is a new quarterback. This is a guy that makes less mistakes and a guy that can make more plays and just a smarter overall leader. So I think the Patriots probably lose this game, but I wouldn't rule it out to be really close. New England just plays the Jets and Robert Sala's teams really well. Week number four, the San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco. You're going from, at least you have a 10-day break. I will say that, but you're going from the east to the west from a Thursday night. Jets game to a Sunday Sunday 49er game. I'm going with the Niners. Last time they played the Niners, I think it was 2020 in New England. And that was one of the most embarrassing games I've ever seen uh, from a Patriots fan perspective. It was like, I want to say it was damn near 40 to 7. Like it was really bad. The Niners defense dominated the Patriots. The Niners offense, we couldn't stop their running game. That was when they had Jimmy Garoppolo. He barely did anything, and they still dominated us. So I I just think, you know, whenever we play this offense, we typically have a tough time stopping the run. kind of opens up the passing game through the play action of what Shanahan kind of figures. This has always been an offense and a coach and a coaching tree That has given Belichick a lot of problems. And I could see the very same in in Shanahan almost schooling young Gerard Mayo. So I worry about that. I also worry about the Niners pass rush against the Patriots offense. And the Niners kind of disrupting whatever we have going in the passing game. I just don't know if we have the receivers to really separate against their secondary. I don't know if we have an offensive line that can hold up and really run the ball all over the Niners. So that's just a really troublesome matchup. It's arguably the best team in football, the most talented team in football against, you know, the Patriots. So it's a tough game. Week number five, they play the Miami Dolphins in New England. If this is, you know, a game that the Patriots are going to win against Miami, it should be this one this year. I just personally can't say it's going to happen. Personally, I I just feel like I need to see it before... I believe it with the Dolphins. Like, yeah, the Patriots have been close a couple of times. They should have beat the Dolphins maybe a couple of times the last couple of years. It just hasn't happened. Mike McDaniel, I thought, had some good game plans against New England's defense. They're just such a talented, fast offense. It's really hard to play an aggressive style against them. You have to be very conservative and very laid back. And it almost, it's really hard to shut them down. You have to almost contain them, especially in good weather, you know, no wind, all that sort of stuff that likely this game in early October will have. And then on the other side of the ball, you know, Miami's defense isn't great. Maybe New England can run the ball here. Maybe they're able to, if the Dolphins are still missing some of their pass rushers, maybe they're able to make some plays in the passing game and 
and really make this one interesting, but I think Miami's a troubling matchup for the Patriots. Uh, so I'm going to go with the Dolphins here. The Houston Texans are next up. I'm going to go with the Texans regardless of where this game is. I think the Texans are just much better. They have the better quarterback. They have the better defense of line, maybe. They have the better coaching staff for sure. They have the better receivers. They have the better offense. There's just not a lot that the Texans don't have that's better than the Patriots. Maybe in New England, right? Texans having to go to the Patriots. Maybe if there's bad weather, maybe that affects C.J. Stroud. Maybe if the Patriots defense has one of the best games of their season, they can disrupt Stroud. But again, like I just don't think the Patriots are balanced enough on both sides of the ball to get this outcome. So I'm going to go with the Texans. They are a elite AFC team in my opinion. The Jacksonville Jags in Jacksonville. I'm going to go with Jacksonville. Again, guys, I think Jacksonville is the better team. I think it's in Jacksonville. I think they have the better quarterback. I'm not sure if Drake May will be playing yet. That will be interesting. Maybe Mac Jones. Or this one is in London, though. I did say it's in Jacksonville. I correct myself. It's in London. That is almost even worse because... Jacksonville is used to playing in London. That's almost like a free win for them. I mean, they beat Buffalo last year in London because they're used to playing there. They're used to that environment. Now, the Patriots kind of are as well. If there's another team in football that's played in London quite a bit, it is the Patriots. They played there last year, I think, unless that was in Germany. I can't quite recall. But regardless, they had that trip, right? So, But the Jags are used to that trip, and... uh, you know, they they maybe could make this one close. Again, I think the Patriots are going to be in a lot of games. It's just a matter of winning them. I think at the end of the day, the Jags have more skill talent. They have a better quarterback. And they have a more reliable coach that also has a proven track record of beating the Patriots and Doug Peterson in big moments. So this is basically a primetime game. I think Jacksonville wins it with Trevor Lawrence. Week 8, the Jets at the Patriots. I think the Patriots get on the board here with their second win. Kind of depressing to say that it comes in week eight. But I think we're starting to get to Drake May territory here. But I also feel like the Patriots at home should beat the Jets. They play the Jets really well, as I stated before. I think the Jets offense is going to have a tough time moving the ball against the New England defense. I just don't think they bring a lot of creativity or flavor to the table. They don't really help their skill talent or their offensive line all that much. So I think New England could grind out a pretty defensive game and win one of these in like last second fashion through a field goal or, you know, a last second drive. So I think New England pulls off an upset there. In week nine, New England definitely could beat Tennessee, but both teams are pretty even. I could see this one going either way, so I'm going to lean off of this for a second. Tennessee is kind of a tricky place to play, and I've seen the Patriots struggle in that environment before. The Titans do have some areas that I think are better than New England, but I also feel like Quarterback play is at least pretty kind of similar. And then the offensive line, I think, is pretty weak for Tennessee. They do have better receivers. They probably have, you know, some better areas of their defense. There, some, But, like, again, New England might be the more talented overall team. I think Tennessee has some high-end talent at, like, corner, D-tackle, D-end, wide receiver. Like, they've got some aspects I really like about them. But... We'll get back to that. I want to go over something about the Patriots schedule, right? Like when we're just comparing quarterbacks here for New England, like their quarterback is worse in every single game that they play until this game in week nine. Like unless Drake May is a superstar right away and he starts in week one, then I could be wrong about this and that could completely change the outcome of the Patriots season and the complexion of it. But when you're talking about Joe Burrow, even Geno Smith, I mean, Jacoby could probably outplay Geno Smith in a game, which is why I have them winning, but he's not overall better. Aaron Rodgers, you would still expect to be better than Jacoby Brissett, or a rookie Drake May. Brock Purdy is certainly better. Tua has proven to be better, right? Stroud is certainly better. Trevor Lawrence is more talented, and Aaron Rodgers again. So really, when you're looking at Tennessee and Chicago, these are games where maybe New England actually has the better quarterback, and then you could kind of argue maybe they have the better defense. And, and then other aspects can come into play. But what hurts them is they're on the road, right? I'd, I'd really rather have the, the Texans game on the road and just say, hey, that's a loss regardless, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, <laughs> but the Tennessee game, the Chicago game, those games at home, I'd kind of lean towards the Patriots. 
right? So let's just skip those games for a sec. I'm going to go with the Rams beating the Patriots, assuming Matthew Stafford is healthy, although that could be maybe like a slip-up game for the Rams. I do think the Patriots could make life challenging on the Rams offensively, considering, you know, how they've played McVay's offenses in the past. And also, but Matthew Stafford has played well against New England in, in a couple outings before. And I would say that they have a lot of weapons that are just hard to contain. It's hard to get a handle of on all of what they do in terms of the run and the pass game. And they are going to beat you at a, you know, at a certain point. The Rams defense, though, isn't that great. And I could see the Patriots scoring some points on them. So that could actually end up being a little bit of a shootout. So I could actually see this game being an upset. Uh, I will not rule that out. I do think the Dolphins will sweep New England, especially because the early game for the Patriots is in New England and it's not going to be like ugly weather. I think the Patriots in ugly weather would beat the Dolphins, but I don't expect that to happen. And then in Miami, New England just always loses to Miami. I do think the Patriots can beat the Colts um, with an even playing field, potentially at quarterback. I think the Colts are pretty flawed in terms of what are they going to get in consistency from their offense? It's kind of like the Patriots that way. They have more potential but I think there's also, especially in New England, a little bit later in the year where it could be ugly weather, a dome team going to New England, that's tough for them. And then a defense that has a pretty bad secondary, in my opinion, New England might be able to make some plays through the air there. Then they've got the bye week. I think the Patriots will beat the Cardinals in Arizona. I, I think their defense will come to play here. And I think the Cardinals have probably the worst defense the Patriots will play all year. And I think this will be Drake May season after the bye at the very least. So I think that New England will win this game uh, with a big boost from Drake May in this game. Maybe his best game of the season there. Then we got the Patriots at the Bills. I think they'll lose to the Bills both times. I just think the Bills are the better team, better quarterback. They'll, Especially at this point in the season in like December, January, they'll be gearing up for the playoffs. The Patriots will kind of be like looking ahead to 2025 based on the results I have them with right now. I do think the Patriots can beat the Chargers. The Patriots beat the Chargers quite often. Now, Jim Harbaugh is going to give them a different vibe and a different toughness, but that's a Charger LA team going to New England in like January, December. I think the Patriots will probably fare pretty well in that game, and I think their defense will likely dominate uh, that game against a really underwhelming skill group in the LA Chargers. So right now I have the Patriots with five wins, which isn't too bad. And I think, honestly, they're going to win one of these two games against the Titans or the Bears. Um, either one could happen. Uh, I think that the Patriots could upset the Bears, definitely. Um, I'm kind of thinking it through. Like, which team do I think the Patriots match up better with? I think Will Levis could have a really bad game against the Patriots. I think Caleb Williams is more likely to play better against New England because of his ability to extend plays and kind of make magic. But man, I could see them losing both, but I think they'll win one. I mean, I think that's pretty fair. Like neither of these teams are elite. Chicago is a tougher place to play, but I would also say New England is pretty used to playing in pretty ugly weather. Tennessee might be a little bit warmer. Uh, the defense of Tennessee is certainly worse than the defense of Chicago, I would say. I, I would say they lose to Chicago and they beat Tennessee, which would have them ending up with 6-11 and 11 as their record. I think that's pretty fair, guys. I don't know what you guys think, but let me know in the comments. I, I think, honestly, I'm being a little bit negative in this video, a little bit underwhelming. Like, the early start to schedule is really, really tough. Don't get me wrong. I think they'll lose to the Bengals almost certainly. I think they'll lose to the Niners almost certainly. And then I think the Jets and the Dolphins are both really hard games. And the Texans is almost a certain loss. London, you never really know about that game. Then they play the Jets, which I think they'll beat once. Titans and Bears could be a flip-flop. The Rams could be a potential upset. I could see that in New England at that time of the year. And Stafford, you know, you never know which games he might miss. He's probably going to miss a couple during the year. You've got Miami in Miami which is going to be a loss. Then they play the Colts at home, which I think should be a win. The Cardinals could be a loss, but could be a win. The, the Bills, they might be able to beat once. You never know. But yeah, that's kind of how I see it. 6-11 and 11 for the Patriots. Probably the worst team in the AFC East. But I think if Drake May starts and he ends up being the next CJ Stroud, this team could be 11-6. and six. I mean, I wouldn't rule that out. Like their defense is that good to the point where 
it's really all about the offense this year and like finding out what they can be. I just think there's going to be trouble for them all year on offense. There's going to be a roller coaster ride with the quarterback position. The offensive line will probably be a bit inconsistent. The receiving core, they just don't have a lot of elite talent there. So while I do think the defense will be very good and get them some wins and keep them in a lot of games and they'll lose a lot of games that are close, no matter the quarterback, I think that it's hard to imagine that they're in the playoffs this year. So that's what I have for the Patriots. Six and 11. I'm going to keep my expectations low this year and ride that out and see how it works out for me. The last couple of years, I've been a little bit too high on the Patriots. I was right about them in 2021, but then 2022 and 2023, they set me back and they kind of made me a little angry. So I'm going in with low expectations and hopefully... They spoil my expectations and outdo them and outperform them. Grog spike the like button. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.